page 62 twinkle twinkle little star on page 61 introducing you to the F position well I mean the position is based on the name of the note at the bottom of the position C position we've had G position with G on the F position just F's on the bottom but they're entered well I'm a little confused here I don't remember them t telling you about flat signs flats I know we've had sharps because we've had the G sharp or the F sharp. We've been G G major. Been but I don't remember the flat. I think it, they've introduced the sign maybe, but I don't know if they really told you what flats were about. So I'll tell you now in case. Hopefully, I'm not repeating myself too much. You know that a sharp sign takes the note up a half step. So if you have a G and you want a G sharp, you just go up a half step. That's why we played F sharps with just a flats go down. The big deal. And that's what they look like. You can see at the top of page 61 that the B, that little sign in front of that B, the note B, that's a flat. This simply means instead of playing a B, you go down one note, white or black, it's here. You go down a half step. It's a B flat. If I have a G and I need a G flat, I go here. If I have a C and I need a C flat, I go here. It's also a B, but it's a C flat too. Because there's no note in, but it's just one note, white or black. That's flat signs. You, and again, we're going to use the same finger we would use on the white key for the black key for now. I mean, when you're trying to figure out a fingering, that's usually your first choice. And if that doesn't work, then you have to figure out some other way of doing it. So for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, let's take this as 4-4 time, treble and bass clef, quarter notes and half notes. We can handle that, I hope. There's a few whole notes. Okay. Right hand first. We're starting out here, but actually we're not here. We're here. Because we have that D, D in the second measure. So we have to accommodate that. See, when you're looking at a fingering for a piece, you have to look ahead. You can't just look at the beginning there and say, okay, that's it. You got to see what notes are coming in in the next couple, three measures or so, and then where are you? Well, I have a, a D coming up, so I got to be here to accommodate that. Okay, we can do that. I don't agree with their fingering in this arrangement, but I'm going to go ahead and use it uh, for now, and we'll see what happens. So right hand, quarter notes, one, two, fourth finger on the C. Now they want you to use fourth finger again. That's really not a good idea. I mean, that's, I'm going to suggest you, we might go, I'm going to show you something a little more advanced, but it's really going to help. And you need to know it anyway, so why not? When you're coming down, second measure you hear. I'm going to suggest you play the first B flat with third finger and then the second B flat with fourth finger. You got to be able to do this anyway. Eventually you need to be able to do it without looking at the keyboard. You can feel you're doing this. You should do it in both hands. That's practice you should, but I'm going to recommend you do that three and then four. And anywhere else in this piece, you get the same passage, I'd finger it the same way. That last measure, the first line is here. We need to be in this position because we got the F coming up. And now we can stay in this position, second line, second measure, or measure five. Now the C can be played with fifth finger. And, the, and you're staying here until the third line, last measure. You, we you ought to come back up, fourth finger on the C there, because in the next measure, that last line there, you, you got a D's again. And then three and four again. And that accommodates that. We're covering six notes with five fingers and trying to play a more or less legato as best we can. Yeah. Left hand, you have an F and a C. then a B flat and a D. So the B is here, it's got here. And then here, again the thumb's doing both. And the next measure, and then an F and a C. Next line, here and here. And this is really what the left hand's doing for the most part. 
put the hands together here, you're here actually. I hope I don't want to play it for you. I don't want you copying me. I want you to read the music and figure it out on your own, pretty much. Although I just demonstrated pretty much the whole thing. When you can get all that, get rid of the hesitations and all that, and there's no articulation in here at all. And when they don't give you anything at all, it's up to you what you want to do. I could play them all staccato if I wanted to. This is my choice. They didn't say anything. But when you're first starting out, I recommend you play it all legato. And then you can alter it as you get to know it and you get to feeling the music. We get into interpreting the music. I haven't really spoken about it too much, but if they're not going to give us anything, then it's up to us. The left hand with these chords is just pretty much going to keep them legato. Keep them soft and out of the way. We want to hear the right hand. Then dynamic, well, it's soft. We're, that's the melody. The whole thing is kind of soft. It's, they only give you soft. You all have to stay soft. You can get a little louder and softer than that. It's up to you. I'd come down there. It's like ending a sentence. You come down at the end. Well, you just in a phrase, come down a bit. And I could echo that. Play this soft. And then back up. We play this sort of a medium loud, whatever, and then come down. So experiment with the dynamics. I mean, these dynamics, this is an arrangement. These dynamics are suggestions. So you can have fun with it. Just keep overall, it's on the soft side. Yeah, whatever. Speed wise, peacefully, whatever you feel peacefully is. So to me, how much wine I've had or how much coffee I've had as to how peaceful it's going to be. I don't know. And I play around with the staccatos and I experiment. I'm experimenting all the time with it. When I'm practicing pieces, I try different things out to see if I like them. As long as I don't violate what the music tells me to do, I'm good to go. It's whatever. So even there, I mixed up staccatos and legatos and however I felt it, and louds and softs, however I felt it. You have to make it yours eventually. Got to get to know it first, get all the mechanics out of the way, and then when you can start feeling thing. Have fun with it. That's where the magic truly happens. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do any staccatos or anything like that. I'm not going to do any dynamics. So just give us four counts. Let's play it together slowly. Remember the right hand is here, not here. One, two, ready, go.